In every zombie movie, people try to survive and flee to that one place that is free from zombies. And in this video, we're gonna talk about a scientific research that reveals whether and where we can survive a zombie apocalypse. And in case you think it is a nonsense, what I want you to know is that the CDC had a page for zombies before COVID and even the Pentagon has an unclassified document that details a zombie survival plan. So in 2015, scientists from Cornell University published a paper where they modeled a zombie outbreak in the continental United States and used statistical mechanics to determine under what circumstances can humanity survive. They even compared it with classic model for infectious disease that is used to predict the spread of the coronavirus. Although the results suggest that humanity will be able to survive in the end, I want to let you know how they came up with that conclusion, and by the end of the video, you will know what to do, where to go, in case of the real World War C. To begin with, let's start with the basic model. In the traditional SIR model for infectious disease, we have three states for each individual. Susceptible, infectious, and recovered. Whereas for zombie outbreak, we have three states as well. Susceptible, zombie, and removed. Susceptible refers to uninfected human, zombie refers to zombie, and removed refers to zombie that is terminated by human. Although zombies are known to be very hard to kill, just consider them possible to be killed for now, say, by double tap. Now for us to build a model around a zombie outbreak, we need to consider the number of transitions between states. And in this case, we have two. A human being bitten and turned into a zombie, and a zombie being killed and removed from the system. And governing these transitions are two parameters. One is the bite parameter, which determines the probability of a zombie successfully biting a human. And two is the kill parameter, that gives the probability of a human successfully killing a zombie. Now, of course, these numbers are completely up for decision depending on how strong the zombies are. But in general, we define virulence alpha as the kill parameter kappa over the bite parameter beta. If the zombies are as weak as the ones in The Walking Dead, then they will be killed faster than they can bite, and alpha will become larger than one. In this case, a zombie outbreak can be contained very easily. However, if the zombies are as fierce as the ones in 28 weeks later, then kappa will be smaller than beta, and alpha will become less than 1. In this case, a zombie outbreak will become a zombie apocalypse. Although this number can still vary between 0 and 1, Based on this simple model, scientists have found that the world will always end up with all zombies and no humans in the end, as opposed to infectious disease that can still end up with only a portion of human population being infected. In the previous model, results suggest that if we fail to contain a zombie outbreak, then humanity will always be wiped out with no chance of survival. However, this deterministic model is solely dependent on the parameters we set and completely ignores all randomness in real life. Say if the first zombies were accidentally killed by the Leaning Tower of Pisa, then the outbreak can still be contained early on even for the most powerful zombies. By adopting a stochastic model that allows randomness, scientists have found there's still a small chance that some humans can survive even if the zombies bite faster than we kill. After testing the stochastic model on a homogeneous lattice and noticed some pockets of humans can still survive, researchers continue to simulate the outbreak, but this time using the population in the continental United States. Because the population is unevenly distributed, the pattern of the outbreak is expected to be different from the homogeneous lattice and the locations of the safe spots will depend on the population distribution. Using data from the 2010 census, researchers gridded the country into 1,500 times 900 blocks and assigned over 306 million Americans into the blocks according to their reported residence. 
To make the simulation more realistic, they considered the moving speed of the zombies to be 1 feet per second and the amount of time needed for an infected human to turn to be 30 minutes. They even specified that a human and a zombie would only interact within 100 feet. After setting all parameters, they then began the simulation by turning one in every million humans into zombies and allowed them to diffuse like random gas inside the confinement. As transportations were expected to shut down, all humans were assumed to be staying home and not moving around. As zombies interacted with humans and spread from one block to another, the population count for each block was constantly updated, just like in the viral video game Plaguing. That is because the rate of interactions depend on the numbers of humans and zombies, or is what we call population dependent. Although the overall trend turns out to be similar to the models we viewed previously, the initial rate of infection seems to be much faster in the countrywide simulation. This means that if a zombie outbreak really happens in the United States, then we will very likely die in the first few weeks. But what if we manage to survive? Where should we go? In the following pictures, we use three colors to indicate three states of a population. We use blue for humans, red for zombies, and green for dead zombies that were killed by humans. As the outbreak began mostly in the cities, we could see the plague spread out in circles at different speed depending on the population density. Seven days into the outbreak, the urban areas were the most dangerous because many people could serve as patient zero and human-zombie interaction could be extremely volatile due to high population density. If you live in the cities, you should definitely leave as fast as possible or else you won't stand a great chance surviving. However, if you stayed home and somehow survived the first wave like Will Smith in I Am Legend, then it is not advisable to leave the city at this point because 28 days later, literally, the metropolitan areas were no longer of the greatest risk, but rather the regions outside the cities. If we take the example in the research paper, 28 days later in California, St. Joaquin Valley should be the most dangerous area as it would be overrun by zombies coming from San Francisco, San Diego, and Los Angeles. Although the outbreak should be less intense on the west coast because most people are living in the east, the simulation showed that over half the country would have fallen in a month as the zombies continue to spread to the rest of the United States. But that would take a relatively long time because the zombies had less people to infect in their rural areas. And according to the research, only two states would have places still free from zombies four months into the outbreak. One is Nevada, the other is Montana. If you want to know what would happen if we just start with one patient zero, you can check out this free simulator where you can pinpoint just one place and try to infect the entire United States. So try it out yourself and let me know where you would go in case of a zombie apocalypse. Because who knows, maybe you would choose the White House. Casablanca.